Buongiorno a tutti. Voglio cominciare per ringraziare l'Accademia Pontificia per la Vita per invitarmi a presentare questo discorso. Eh, io ho preparato il mio discorso in inglese, allora cambierò la lingua. Non perché in inglese, non perché sono né, io sono né italiano né inglese, maltese, ma preferisco di parlare eh, in inglese. I confess that uh, when I started preparing when I started preparing this uh, lecture, uh, I found a lot of literature on robotics, but very few literature on the contribution of theology. I have found my inspiration primarily from two German theologians, Klaus Demmer and Alphonse Auer, in the approach I shall be presenting later on in the role of hermeneutical theology and also the role of theology in front of this new phenomenon. Discussions on robotics in the social media and literature often take a utilitarian and instrumental approach. Intelligent and learning machines are perceived as a means of making our lives easier and more comfortable, minimizing the costs of production and labor, improving healthcare system, transportation, and military defense, and substituting humans in child and elderly care. Moreover, robotics designers, engineers, and programmers tend to focus on technical challenges and advances without any reflection on the pressing philosophical, ethical, and religious questions. The moral quandaries raised by robotics are too important and complex to be left to technical experts. In a democratic society, all stakeholders, including faith communities, have a right to enter into an open and transparent debate on these emerging technologies, technological breakthroughs that are blurring the lines between the human and the machine. Humans fail, humanity fails to ask pertinent philosophical, ethical, and religious questions if Christians and concerned citizens remain bystanders as cognitive machines develop and become a commonplace. Public debate on robotics must cross multiple scholarly and professional disciplines, including theology. The initial reaction of many theologians and religious people to the very idea that faith has nothing to contribute to the debate on robotics is no longer tenable. Theologians are able to broaden the people's horizon on robotics by asking the right questions that take place, that place life, science, and technology in a different light. The classical definition of theology as faith seeking understanding, excuse me, the classical definition of Theology as faith-seeking understanding means that faith in God, as revealed in Jesus Christ, prompts a questioning search for a deeper understanding of human experience. Faith is not an independent reality alongside the rationality engaged in human experience, nor does faith diminish our interest in the rational systems operating in the dynamics of converging technology to improve the quality of life. Human experience could be a genuine source for theologizing an equal partner in the dialogue with revealed faith. In what way are intelligent and thinking machines related to the theological narrative? Faith provides a new horizon of meaning, which is something like a hermeneutical key for the understanding of today's scientific technocratic culture. From a theological perspective, technology can actually improve the human life only when accompanied with, quoting from Laudato Si, a sound ethic, a culture and spirituality 
genuinely capable of capable of setting limits and reaching clear-minded self-restraint. Human responsibility, values, and moral conscience are needed to guide technological power since it is an illusion to claim its moral neutrality. Laudato Si 114. Fate exercises a threefold role in relation to the technological rationality manifested in robotics, namely integration, stimulation, and criticism. Hermeneutical theology broadens the horizon of meaning to improve beyond the instrumental and reductionist models of robotics to an ethics of responsibility that stimulates a critical discernment of the legitimate motives, sound values, and norms that should guide robotics and its use. Theological anthropology is the hermeneutical key to restore the centrality of the dignity of the human person in today's robotic culture. Pope Francis' remark in his message to the World Economic Forum, convened in January 2018 at Davos, is very meaningful in this regard. Quoting, artificial intelligence, robot, robots, and other technological innovations must be employed that they contribute to the service of humanity and to the protection of our common home, rather than to the contrary, as some assessments unfortunately foresee. Pope Francis reiterated this theological insight in his letter to the Pontifical Academy for Life to mark the 20th, 25th anniversary. Pope Francis wrote, quoting, there is a pressing need then to understand these epochal changes and new frontiers in order to determine how to place them at the service of the human person, while respecting and promoting the intrinsic dignity of all. This task is extremely demanding, given its complexity and the unpredictability of future developments. Consequently, it requires even greater discernment than usual. We can define this discernment as a sincere work of conscience in its effort to know the possible good on the basis of which to engage responsibly in the correct exercise of practical reason. Faith asks hard questions about the value and nature of robotics, their influence on human flourishing, their societal benefits and risks, their impact on the labor market, healthcare, industry, economy, transportation, education, and military defense. Robotics needs to be human-centered. Let me start by focusing on the first critical approach offered by theology, namely integrating the integrating role of robotics, of theology on robotics. Pope Francis makes a strong appeal in Laudato Si to cultivate in uh, Laudato Si 159 a broader vision of reality through the concept of integral ecology that insists on the conviction that everything is closely interrelated and that today's problems call for a vision capable of taking into account every aspect of the global crisis. Laudato Si 137. He calls to notice and study interconnections in order to avoid, quoting, the fragmentation of knowledge and the isolation of bits of information that can actually become a form of ignorance unless they are integrated into a broader vision of reality. Close quotation. The approach of integral ecology to the globalization of the technological paradigm, what he calls in Laudato Si 106, with its effort, effect on reality as a whole, human and social, is an important hermeneutical key to the critical understanding and evaluation of the epistemological paradigm of science and technology. The theological concept of human dignity is central to the integral ecology approach. It is an overarching notion and an integrative moral principle that bridges religious and philosophical insights. Human beings, not intelligent machines or robots, have inherent dignity because only humans are created in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, robots and humans are not to be confused even if, 
an android, the robot, has the seductive appearance of a human. Or if a powerful cognitive robot has learning capacity that exceeds individual human cognition. Moreover, human beings have intrinsic worth because they are centers of rationality, as Kant says, autonomous and free, and subject of human rights. However, the dignity of every human person needs to be the central moral consideration in the design, production, and regulation of robots. Robotics and artificial intelligence can enrich human dignity and amplify human potentials and enhance enhancing human flourishing. However, they can be a manipulative and abusive power. For instance, robots enhance human dignity to work to workers when assisting them to reduce and eliminate dangerous and tedious tasks and when contributing to make their work more efficient, more varied, less strenuous and more human. Moreover, robots have removed barriers in many cases where people with people with disabilities. Robotics can, provi can provide an opportunity to combine work and family care. On the other hand, however, the increasing use of robotics also poses threats to human dignity, increased efficiency in the workplace through ro the, uh, brought by robotization, automation and digitization is widely believed to replace a considerable number of tasks, and sometimes people, by machines. It is at the same time worrying that these people will not easily find other employment in a highly complex robotized and digital society. Of course, replacement in the case of extremely dirty, dangerous, humiliating, tedious tasks may serve to protect human dignity. Yet, substitution of workers by intelligent machines is against human dignity. Pope Francis reminds us that decent and sustainable work anoints us with dignity. In one of his speeches he says, quoting, it, is therefore, it must therefore be clear that the real goal to be achieved is not income for all, but work for all. Because without work, without work for all, there is no dignity for all. End of quotation. Pope Francis in Laudato Si warned us that robotics could never have, could have, could never have a negative impact. Pope Francis in Laudato Si warned us that robotics should never have a negative impact on a dignified life through work. Laudato Si 128. Work is, is a necessity, part of the meaning of life on this earth a path to growth, human development, and personal fulfillment. Since we are created with a vocation to work, as Pope Francis says in Laudato Si 28, 128, every individual has the right to participate in creation, to fully integrate into society and to foster our personal and individual development. An economy that favors technological progress in which the costs of production are reduced to laying off workers and replacing them with machines ends up working against ourselves. Laudato Si 128. The theology of work supports programs for the skilling, upskilling, and reskilling of workers who are in a vulnerable and pr precarious situation. Robots protect human dignity when they monitor public spaces to ensure people's security and safety, or when used by the military for defense purposes. The algorithm, our algorithmic monitoring of specific workplaces can increase the safety of workers. It also can increase productivity and discipline of workers. However, pervasive and excessive surveillance of robots is a threat to human dignity since they raise privacy concerns and autonomy issues and consequently increase vulnerability. Human dignity does not exist without respect for autonomy, independence, freedom, and privacy that are essential for human flourishing. The use of robotics in elderly care is ambivalent. Robots, robotic caregivers, enhance the human dignity of the elderly by saving them from lives of loneliness. Care bots can substitute caregivers 
in routine and strenuous tasks and can provide mechanical help for human care for the elderly or disabled people. The human aspect of caring for patients, however, cannot be replaced. Robots can be programmed for interaction but cannot share feelings or transmit emotions or have sympathy. We cannot speak about artificial care or artificial empathy. The intrinsic meaning of care is the practical expression of human virtues in empathetic and interpersonal relationships, above all, towards particular vulnerable individuals that require responsibility and need for solicitude and attention. Robotic cars, also called self-driving cars or, or autonomous cars, can protect human dignity by improving the quality of life through safer and more efficient public transport, decrease the number of accidents, lessen traffic jams, stress-free parking, better conditions of traffic in urban areas, ease congestion and give greater accessibility to senior citizens and people with disabilities. However, they can also threaten human dignity, harm or kill persons and endanger people's life due to safety and security concerns, technological failure, proneness to hacking, sensor failures, potential loss of privacy and impact on employment opportunities. From a theological perspective, science and technology are wonderful products of a God-given human creativity, as we find in Laudato Si 102, which empower humanity's vocation to participate in God's creative action. In biblical theology, robots and technology in general are perceived as God's given means of filling and subduing the earth, bringing out the extraordinary capacities which the Creator has given to us to explore in our role as co-creators. The biblical narrative also reminds us of the pervasive, per pervasive nature of human fragility and sinfulness and consequently the need for wisdom, prudence and discernment in face of technological progress. The theology of creation, sin and redemption, redemption integrates robotics into God's plan of creation. The reality of human sin, weakness and vulnerability and God's plan to redeem humanity and creation through technological ingenuity, which is the human response to God's grace. Let me, let me now pass to the second role of theology after integration, the stimulating role of theology in robotics. A major concern about robotics is the claim that cognitive machines can now be attributed agency similar to humans due to their level of intelligence. Many, many believe that today's sophisticated learning machines have a self with intentions and goals, emotions, and some degree of awareness and consciousness. Moreover, they believe that cognitive machines are autonomous, capable of decision-making and interacting with others, recognizing people, talk, and resolve problems even faster than humans. Theological anthropology and ethics throw light on the true nature of the human person and moral agency. Theological discourse stimulates the debate on robotic agency by raising pertinent questions on the true meaning of intentionality, freedom of the will, the role of emotions and desires, moral conscience and accountability. The epistemological question concerning the attribution of moral knowledge to robots and its application to a range of different and possibly very complex moral dilemmas needs to be sorted out. The emerging discipline of machine ethics, what is called, which aims to equi equip robots with ethical principles or procedures of resolving ethical dilemmas, indicate the extent of today's te technological reductionism, which is harshly criticized by Pope Benedict XVI in Caritas in Veritate, number 70. Christian ethics reveals what Gilbert Trial call called a category mistake caused by asking the wrong question, by equating human agency with robotic agency. Moreover, Ludwig Wittgenstein called philosophers as well as theologians to pay attention to the use of ordinary language as a way of resolving philosophical problems. Theology can serve as a grammar to structure thoughts and expressions about the cognitive machines in order to correct the blatant confusion of language games 
in the ordinary day speech on robotic agency. Moreover, Christian anthropology stimulates pertinent ontological questions on robotics. What does it mean to be human? Can we assign personhood to robots? Can we talk about the dignity of robots? Do they have rights? Are robots self-conscious? Do they have feelings and emotions? Do they have a moral conscience? Do robots have intrinsic value or instrumental value? Can robots sin? Do robots have a soul? Does God want the salvation of robots? In Christian ethics, similar to philosophical, to moral philosophy, it is through free actions and deliberate decisions taken in conscience that humans become moral agents. The moral goodness of an action, of a human act, is assessed in accordance with three conditions, which we all know from theological, traditional theological thinking, the object, the intention, and the circumstances. The distinction between the members and non-members of a moral community depends on the capacity to exhibit intentionality, the will and rational deliberative choices, to move spontaneously towards an object, and a rational awareness of circumstances. The absence of these criteria means the exclusion from the moral community due to the non-existence of moral agency. Moral, moral agency is a characteristic of humans, not of machines. The agency of robots has its origin in the work of the designers and the programmers and in the learning process that cognitive robot systems have gone through. Moreover, the goals of robotic activities are structured in their inbuilt artificial intelligence and algorithms. For this reason, one cannot ascribe intrinsic intentionality to the robot. No, mot no matter how intelligent robots may act, they lack intentionality. For this reason, robotic agency as such has no moral worth. It is the agency of their designers and programmers that falls within the moral domain. A morally good act requires the goodness of the object, of the end and of the circumstances together. Without the capacity of intentionality, the issue of the object of the action and the circumstances of the moral act, in the case of robots, become irrelevant and superfluous. The emerging discipline of machine ethics, which is concerned with giving machines ethical principles or a procedure for discovering a way of resolving ethical dilemmas they might encounter, raises important questions. Is it possible to construct some kind of artificial moral agents? In other words, could we program, program morality in a robot? Can we teach robots right from wrong? Moreover, can robots when handling a situation which does not match with the rules, be equipped with a decision-making process. Can they learn from experience and make moral decisions about how they should act? Can robots calib calibrate their algorithms themselves that their behavior becomes perfectly unpredictable? Most scholars working on machine ethics agree that robots are still far from, be from becoming ethical agents comparable to human beings. Virtue ethics, which is central in moral theology, is another issue in robotic agency. Is it possible to program robots to acquire moral virtues? Good dispositions or habits are those qualities that a moral agent acquires naturally by the frequent repetition of free acts. How can robots become virtuous if they do not possess emotions and feelings in the proper sense as humans? To be a virtuous is not a matter of being designed and programmed in such a way to possess certain dispositions, but rather the result of rationality and free will. Robots can never acquire the virtues of justice, prudence, temperance, and fortitude, which are central in Christian ethics. Given the increasing autonomy of robots, and the question, the question arises who exactly should bear ethical and legal responsibility for robotic behavior? Could we talk about shared responsibility between robots, designers, engineers, and programmers. None of these agents could be ind indicated as the ultimate source of a action. The problem dilutes the notion of responsibility altogether. Moreover, the issue of traceability is crucial in the discussion of responsibility of robots. Is it possible to trace the causes 
of all past actions and omissions of a robot? Another problem in robotics is the issue of rights that are central to Christian social teaching. What is the moral status of robots? Are they subject of rights? Would robots deserve the same moral respect and immunity from harm, as is currently the case with humans and some non-human animals? The draft report with the recommendation on civil law rules on robotics presented in 2017 to the Commission by the Committee on Legal Affairs of the European Parliament was widely criticized as inappropriate, particularly for its recommendation to consider robots as electronic persons. The last point is the critical role of theology in robotics. A great concern for theological ethics is today's overconfident, optimistic, and utopian vision of robotics. The British the theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking voiced many times his concern on this matter. Even Pope Benedict XVI in Caritas in Veritate took also a critical stand towards the technological hubris by warning that human advancement, progress, and development, quoting, goes away if humanity thinks it can recreate itself through its wonders of technology. Close quotation, Caritas in Veritate 68. True freedom becomes a reality by accepting human limitations. The theology of creation, sin, and redemption throws light on the human condition when all its potentialities and limitations as a God-given gift to be cherished, respected, and improved. This requires a sense of humility to accept human vulnerability without, however, becoming disinterested to continue to improve the human condition. Robotic technology is raising intriguing questions on justice, solidarity, and the common good, which are central concepts in Christian social teaching. What are the potential social injustices and inequalities related to economic model that assumes robots to be a different sort of capital, one that is a close substitute to human workers? Will robotics enhance modern-day poverty and create a new category of vulnerable group? Are robots increasing social inequality? by robotics, automation, algorithms, and artificial intelligence that account for job polarization? Will they bring a new divide between developing and developed countries regarding the access to robotic technology? Will the digital divide encompass the robotic divide? These are a few questions raised by Christian social teaching on the moral quandary on robotics. Issues of justice arise in the labor sector since the lower skilled workers are becoming disadvantaged. Rapid advancement of robotics requires higher skilled workers. Christian social ethics promotes the right of a decent work and the right to social security. Christian ethics promotes economy, an economy that is at the service of the integral human development. Therefore, society needs to introduce additional protections for vulnerable groups to strike the right balance between security, flexibility, and innovation. We need upskilling of workers, as well as societal upskilling. New institutional arrangement and inst instruments are required because we cannot assume any longer the traditional concept of paid work to be the main basis of the traditional concepts of social and economic security. This is a concept which the European Group of Ethics in the latest opinion on the future of work, future of society, has stressed so much. Healthcare robotics can provide, can provide physical assistance and companionship. A robot that can stimulate cognition of a dementia patient or execute on a day-to-day -day basis some task may be beneficial. However, this type of introduction to robotics can also create uh, serious problems. Let me make my uh, conclusions because the time has run up. Um, Pope Francis, in his message to the executive chairperson of the World Economic Forum on the annual gathering at Davos in 2018, remarked 
there is a grave responsibility to exercise wise discernment for the decisions made will be a decisive for the shaping of the world of tomorrow and that of future generations. Thus, if we want more secure future, one that encourages the prosperity of all, then it is necessary to keep the compass continuously oriented towards the true north, representing by represented by authentic values. Now is the time to take courageous and bold steps for our beloved planet. This is the right moment to put into action our responsibility to contribute to the development of humanity. At first glance, theology and robotics do not seem to have much in common. In a kind of two kingdoms, robotics and IT seem to deal with the physical world while theology deals with the spiritual. Yet Pope Francis' message to the World Economic Forum indicates the relevance of the theological narrative to technology that is shaping the life of current and future generations. Theology needs to get more and more inter interested in robotics in order to offer moral guidance and leadership. Technology in, ro in general and robotics and IT and artificial intelligence in particular matter to theology because they are altering changing culture and creating a new grammar about technological activity. Theological engagement in robotics and artificial intelligence is needed to grapple with the epistemological and ontological issues raised by the robotic culture and the artificial intelligence. Christian ethics, which is theological discourse, contributes to differentiate the human from the machine, to throw light on the nature of the human and robotic agency, and to assess the benefits uh, from the harms of robotics. Once placed in a theological narrative, the ethical, moral, and religious claims made by robots, robotics and artificial intelligence become more significant and intriguing. Let us hope that there will be some gratitude from posterity for the present one, for its moral wisdom, prudence, and foresight to improve the human condition with robotics without, however, compromising the dignity, interests, and rights of current and future generations. Thank you.